Good day, friends. I'm Kerry Dillinger. This is Bible Class Topics. And today, Life's Purpose According to the Father. You know, there is a reason for it all. There's a reason for the ancient writings of the prophets. There's a purpose behind the Son of God coming to our world. There is a rationale behind preserving the Bible in our present age. The remarkable thing about it is that this purpose relates to all of us. We are part of this purpose. To look at one small segment at a time is sometimes baffling. For example, if we only looked at the death of Christ apart from everything else, we would be unable to assign any sense to it. Or the animal sacrifices of the Old Testament would only be puzzling shadows if they were separated from their New Testament substance, namely the sacrifice of Jesus. Life is like that as well. Looking at life as only a series of isolated incidents from which we randomly bounce from one to another, some good and some not good, brings us uncertainty and insecurity. But once one realizes a purpose behind it all, a common thread leading toward a purposed conclusion, everything becomes more meaningful and results in peace of mind. Life's purpose is not a secret. Philosophers have searched for it like some profound dark mystery hidden in an almost inaccessible place. It is not in a hard-to-reach place at all. It's where you would expect such information to be. It's in the scriptures. It's in the Word of God. And what is life's purpose? Consider the answer given by our Creator through inspiring the Apostle Paul with these following words. 2 Corinthians 5, the first 10 verses. For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to put our heavenly dwelling. If indeed by putting it on, we may not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan, being burdened, not that we would be unclothed, that we would be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one of us may receive what is due for what He has done in the body whether good or whether evil. So there you have it. There are several things said here about life's purpose. It's to reach the goal of that day when our mortality is, as Paul said, swallowed up by life. It's to be at home with the Lord. It's to be pleasing to Him. It's to have a reward a reward, I should say, to have a rewarding experience as we stand before the judgment seat of Christ and receive what is due for what we have done in the body, whether good or evil. Whether good or whether bad. We have a building from God. Listen to verse 1 again. For we know that if the earthly tent which is our house is torn down, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The first five verses of the fifth chapter of 2 Corinthians sum up the purpose for which God has prepared us. He plans to clothe our spirits one day with eternal bodies so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. 
If you have time to pause the video, you might want to study these verses a little further. But I will read 1 Corinthians 15, 42-44, and then we'll skip to 50-54, through 54, so that we can think about those together. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable, what is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, is raised up in glory, is sown in weakness, is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it's raised up a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. There are three different states of consciousness described in these passages in the Corinthian letters. First, our present state. We are now in the earthly tent. This means our spirits now inhabit temporary quarters. Our bodies will wear out and die. We groan at the prospect of death. Second, there is a state after death in which our spirits are described as unclothed. Death brings a separation between body and spirit. This fact led James the Lord's brother to write in James 2.26, For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. Though we cannot know what such an existence will be like, that is, the state after death, the context suggests that the disembodied human spirit is uncomfortable with such a situation, feeling exposed. A body is desirable, but our first body is only temporary. The third state of consciousness described in this passage is the eternal state of the saved. A new immortal body is given to the spirit. In this new body, mortality is swallowed up by life. One of the purposes of life is to reach this final state. And in Christ and through Christ, it becomes possible. The Holy Spirit has been given to us as a pledge that for those who walk by faith, that His purpose, the purpose of Godhood, will be fulfilled. Paul tells the Corinthians that we are of good courage. For we walk by faith and not by sight, he says. We are good, of good courage, I say, and prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be at home with the Lord. Verses 7 and 8 of our reading from 2 Corinthians 5. Because of this assurance, we have good courage. We now see that life's problems are not nearly so bad because we become victors over them, including death itself. Paul wrote to the Romans about how the disciple of Jesus overwhelmingly conquers through him who loved us, and that neither tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword shall be able to separate us from the love of Christ. You might want to pause the video and go take a closer look at Romans 8 verses 31 through 39. If God be for us, who can be against us? That's the assurance we all need in such an unbelievable mixed-up world. For those who maintain their walk in Christ Jesus, our exit from this world is simply a giant step towards being at home with the Lord. We have as our ambition to please the Lord. Therefore, also, we have as our ambition, let me start again, 
Therefore also we have as our ambition, whether at home or absent, to be pleasing to him, as we read in 2 Corinthians 5, 9. Tied also to this purpose of God for us is our attitude toward pleasing him. The word translated ambition in the New American Standard Version is translated labor in the King James Version, and it means to strongly aspire. One must be wholly dedicated to pleasing God in one's life. There's so much said in the scriptures about seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and about not neglecting so great a salvation and working out our salvation with fear and trembling. See Matthew 6.33, Hebrews 2.3, Philippians 2.12. It ought to go without saying that possessing this attitude is related to whether we will ever reach our spiritual home. We will not get there by putting things other than His kingdom first. God has prepared a place for us, but we must also prepare to receive it. Someone, who I'm pretty sure was Charles Spurgeon, once said, Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. An ancient prophet urged the people, prepare to meet your God, and Jesus said, Be on the alert then, for you do not know the day or the hour. Another passage that you might be interested in studying at your own pace, Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. We will appear before the judgment seat. Verse 10 of our Reading from 2 Corinthians 5, 4, We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may be recompensed for his deeds in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad, says the ESV. For life's purpose to be fulfilled, it must go well for us at the judgment seat of Christ. Our life's deeds will be considered there. We will be judged according to what we have done, whether good or bad. But thank God that we can appear there as one forgiven. Jesus paid the price for my sins. He is my only hope. It would be a tragedy to enter into eternity as a disembodied spirit exposed and without hope of a new immortal body and destined to a hell prepared for the devil and his angels, as Jesus said in Matthew 25 verse 41. God has not prepared his people for that. God has allowed us by faith to be of good courage. Believers have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. However, to fulfill life's ultimate purpose, it is up to us to put to death the deeds of the flesh. We'll close our study today with a reading from Romans 8 verses 11 through 14. If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Our article today comes from John Quinn. It was originally published in the Expository Files in June of 2000. I'll put a link to that uh, full article in the description below. And our image today comes from were a walk and a pix from pixabay over at pixabay.com i'll put a link in the description to this very photograph if you would be interested in using it for your own purposes thank you for watching thank you for attending to our lesson today we hope that you'll be back with us in just a few more days here at bible class topics when we plan on presenting Another lesson from the Word of God. Until then, may God bless.